Hi guys, Michelle Ochoa here with Divinely Genuine, or as I used to say, your practical priestess. I was looking up some of my old stuff yesterday. I'm like, yeah, I don't really feel the need to title myself as that anymore. <laughs> ah, I hope you guys are doing well. So today is Monday, March 1st. I believe it's the first. It is Rabbit Rabbit as Sim will say. Um, so, <sighs> crazy times. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I'm going to start with prayer. interesting these times we're living in things are speeding up so rapidly to get us to upgrade and all of this and then at the same time there's this need to be to go slower and to soften into um, the energy around us in the moments of presence God, I thank you for the beautiful life you've given us, the beautiful magic that is available to us, magic in the truth that we are, returning us to our hearts as loving human beings here to enjoy life. And God, I pray that this message would not have any ego attached to it, but that your light would shine through me as I show up to deliver the astrology and tarot and any spiritual message. I ask my angels and guides to fill my heart with love so that I may share it with all who is listening and whatever point in time they may hear this message. And God, we thank you for the awareness and light of the stars and the planets to be able to utilize as guidance to get in sync with you, to learn ourselves, to understand our natural energy, and to rise above all programming and um, sink and link to where we belong. God, I thank you for this time in our lives, this very spiritual time, the ending of cycles and beginning of new cycles. And um, thank you that you are within each of us and that the souls are being led and the awareness of astrology really helps and I'm grateful to be able to share it and um, God I just speak blessings over not just the US but the entire world that we would all be returned to our hearts our souls and that the beautiful magic would lead the way the beautiful synchronicities the beautiful um, aha moments and just that your goodness would show through the reflections to all of your people and that darkness and shadows would fall away fall away like ashes blown away God I say I ask that you'd protect the children and the older people and all of us 
especially the um, anyone who's um, being controlled by others, authority figures. God, I, I ask that you would open up their awareness to their angels and guides and that the children would be protected, the elders would be protected, and I know that you're already doing that. And God, within each of us, the soul is within each of us, I ask that we allow and accept the greatest love at the greatest time in our lives. And amen to that. Okay, so the astrology for today, Monday, March 1st, is so beautiful for relationships. Um, let's see. I'm a little note taker right now in my, excuse me, one sec. Um, so we've got the moon in Libra, which is what? Relationships. It's bringing balance to things. It's, um really emotionally wanting to um, feel some peace and some um, some peace, some balance, some harmony. It wants to see justice. And Libra, Libra likes to be with other people, you know. Um, it's a very relatable sign. It can, it's a natural, natural networking, natural marketer. Um, loves aesthetic things like painting and, and, and shiny, bright, beautiful things like this, um, like the little glitter and shine to my sweater, you know. Um, and, um, but for the astrology with the, so emotionally, the moon, right? Emotionally, we can, you know, just kind of want to get into that artsy side of ourselves or, or just the need to relate to others and, um, I think in this ascension process that a lot of us are going through, um, there is a, um, and then the shifting and changing of tribes, right? And families. Um, we're really, um, and then just anyone on their path, like it's a lot of disconnection, which is needed to be able to, you know, at this time with all this Aquarian energy, Aquarius needs to be independent on one hand to figure things out for what it's offering to humanity, to humanity, right? As it is, it does represent the humanitarian. Um, but so like on a, on a basic fundamental level, the COVID has us all kind of um, disconnected and we all went home, right? Um, and I hope you guys went to your true home, the temple, right? But, um, so I feel there's this, you know, Moon and Libra is even more of the need to, to connect. And that's not just, you know, connecting to, um, if you look at the astrology, the Gemini nodes, which we've had for like, this is the second year, I believe. Um, I think it was part of, I think it was, has already been about a year and a half, but, um, the Gemini nodes have been linking us to twin-like energy. So people throw around the twin flame um, um, phenomena, which, you know, um, we can call it whatever we want. The, the sacred unions are huge and beautiful, and that's very twin-like. Um, so when you look at the nodes being in Gemini, and then the moon in Libra, and Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius making a trine to this moon. Um, it's very like karmic, very faded in a very positive way. Um, Jupiter is the positive um, sign of the zodiac, I guess you could say. It's, it's very optim optimistic. It comes from Scorpio where it's like experienced the depths and found the golden treasure and then it's like, aha, I know where I want to go. And Jupiter wants to grow and expand this Aquarian awareness, which is where all these like upgrades are coming from, right? And Saturn is very much like recreating um, structures um, in relationships, right? And um, so Mercury as well is involved in this trine. Um, 
But it's a great, so it's a grand trine in air with the nodes, the moon, Jupiter, and Mercury, right? And so it's our communication, our understanding, knowing where we're going with that twin-like energy. And this is not just the sacred unions, but that is so beautiful and key. Um, it's also, you know, whatever you've chosen to put yourself in, whatever situation, and seeing the relatability of the twin-like energy. What What is this connection about? Is it part of my future? How can I assist this person? And how, you know, or how can I love this person? And how can, and, and what am I, the give and receive, right? Of Libra, they, there's always this give and take to, to any relationship. Um, but really looking at the reflections in our reality and understanding um, the twin-like aspects because it is faded. And is this something that's a part of my path? Am I going to open up to new things? You know, we're so much used to doing the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, the same thing, going in these circles. And um, this is a time in our lives where where you place yourself, it does matter. Um, but it's who you're really connected to on a soul level that is huge and available to us. And so no matter what anyone else's idea is about your path that you may be picking up on as it is a shared collective experience, right? No matter what anyone else's idea of your path is or whatever it is, whatever is most important to you, I think it's crucial to prioritize um, according to that, you know, if you need to spend more time in meditation, do that. Um, you're going to have to come out of it and take action, though, you know, especially with the moon and Libra. Um, Libra energy tends to want to just sit on the fence. People always use that term, you know. Um, it's just we can be a bit indecisive with this. Um, but very, very cool grand trine for, for communicating. Um, with twin-like energy that has already been, you know, building in all of this, um, sacred unions, um, and, um, you know, so we want to look at the South Node in order to understand the North Node and to really understand and navigate this energy. South Node's in Sagittarius, so, like, we don't want to get, unless you're, I say, unless you're Libra Ascendant, because then it's a flip of the chart. But you don't want to get into each their own all of the time for what you feel. But astrology as the guidance is what we want to link to. Because it is the divine, right? Um, and so Sagittarius as the south node, we don't want to get lost in searching for, you know... Um, is it here? Is it there? Is it here? Is it there? Like you should already know, like have an idea on your spiritual path, like your soul family, where you're going, who you're connected to. And now it's just a matter of as our realities are a bit fragment fragmented to bring us to this like ascension point and peak of time to spiritually serve with the right people and this kind of thing. And, and then to just remember to be a human and to enjoy life and to do the things that you, um, to increase your frequency, to, um, open up to things that you may have always wanted to do, or that's more in alignment with your chart and your natural energy. If you're just like learning astrology or just learning to embody your chart. Um, and just knowing that there's infinite possibilities, infinite possibilities, but I think being able to prioritize you know, your time spent in meditation. South node um, is the guru, or Sagittarius is the guru, and it is um, foreign lands, foreign places, adventure, and it has this like searching for wisdom, searching for um, like a higher knowledge, right? Aquarius brings in a higher knowledge, but it's it's different. It's more like um, bright blue, unexpected, and rapid. And so Sagittarius can kind of get lost in like wanting like so much wisdom. And so it's important to do your meditation and whatever you feel 
is best for you, but let's come out of it. Libra Sun and you may be spending more time in that space as it is flipped for us, um, but we still need to bring it back because it's still Gemini, just in that house, to what is Gemini. We're learning to communicate, and then we there's always a balance with the nodes, right? In foreign ways, in new ways, right? In our local environment, and um, as well as, you know, practical, local. Like, how are we, what are we inviting in to bring into our future? Um, these are like times that have never been seen. We need to think about like these are world changing times and what are we offering, right? What are we divinely called to? What can make us happy and vibe up as a human? It doesn't matter if you've never done it. Like I have a friend in Long Beach um, and uh, her name is not Rose. It's gonna be a Rose. I can't think of her name, it's so embarrassing. Um, Oh, it's following me. Anyway, she's 80 years old and just started writing her first um, her first children's book. She's an artist, a dancer. Like, I think it's so beautiful. She's so healthy. And she doesn't allow, like, age or the fact that she's never done it before to stop her. You know, I think that's beautiful. I think it's important right now with all of, just all the time to stay progressive. Aquarius is progressive with Jupiter there, Saturn there. Um, so anyway, so for this day, having that grand trine in air from Jupiter, Mercury to the moon in Libra is, um, and I believe like on a traditional level in astrology, Jupiter speaks to um, a marriage. And um, so this very much, I think, speaks to sacred unions coming into a divine, like beautiful um, unity of the heart. And Mercury is learning to communicate, um, which is the ruling planet of the nodes. And um, let's see what else we have. We have Uranus, sextile Neptune. And so Neptune can be a bit dreamy. Um, do what's best for you, um, for your mental health. This has, you know, been hush-hush in our society. And it's, you know, it's a big deal. Um, and... You know, sometimes for myself, like, um, where I have, like, bouts of depression or something like that, and someone, you know, a lot of artists and musicians, I feel like, may have, like, that extreme, um, or even, like, any kind of um, entrepreneur spirit, like, that extreme energy, right? That passionate stuff, and that's what leads to do things, so it's good, and that kind of tends to make me not want to, like, take care of, like, take, like, prescriptions and things like that and I want to go natural but then it's like you know take what works and be willing to try things because you know you don't want to delay your process you want to like be real with yourself and what you've gone through and especially if you can look at your chart and understand your mental health issues from that or or reach out to someone who's able to read charts and but just also know like that we're all going through, like leaving these understandings of life and coming more into conscious living and um, spiritual alignment and things like this. And that it's okay to one, be real, and two, to I guarantee you that you have plenty of people on your phone, plenty of people on your Facebook, on your Instagram that you can reach out and talk to. Your neighbor, you know, this is the part of like being disconnected, like. Americans, we not a lot of people don't even know their neighbors. Like we don't talk, you know, and uh, myself included, you know, we just get in our own little bubble and do our thing, and that's being seen now more than ever. And with this moon and Libra, Libra will give their energy away to all these different relationships. So if you're paying attention to energy in your heart space, that's where you know how to nav navigate, and. Um, or your intuition, you know, whatever's got you connected to spirit at this point in your process. And, um, but the mental health part, so you're on a sextile Neptune, you know, phone a family member, phone a friend, pet a doggy, get in nature, um, connect to spirit and your own heart. And just, you know, whatever it is that'll make you happy. Watch a romance, watch some sports, whatever your deal is, right? 
Um, but Neptune, a good way to express would be like, you know, try some, um, especially with Libra, uh, maybe painting and drawing or that kind of thing. But so Uranus is a bright blue, like out of nowhere insight. Neptune is also spirituality. It can be illusion though. That's why mental health comes up. Um, sometimes I'm just like, geez, you don't, you don't need a freaking prescription or counselor. You needed to turn on some fucking music. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I've been playing a lot of, like, the frequency music, like, 432 hertz and that kind of thing, which is cool because it's the frequency of love and it, our bodies, like, start to vibe to it. But it gets, it gets boring and it gets, like, you know, sometimes you just got to snap out of the spiritual stuff and be the human again, right? Um, play some Liga tunes, whatever it is that will help you. Um... Uranus is leveling up a brighter awareness. So sextile Neptune. Uranus up sextile Neptune. So a sextile is like um, positive flow, positive energy flow. So to me, I feel like this can be an amazing um, day to to push through levels and blocks to upgrade frequency into the spiritual um, realms. And especially with these um, divine partnerships. And then um, I'm going to look at the chart because I don't know if that's Neptune trine Pluto. Mm. Um, we do still have like Mars square Venus and, um, and so, you know, like relationships and money and our drive and, um, sexual desire and ambition, um, for those things and for being comfortable is a little restrictive but with all this other positive stuff. It's, um, it kind of gives the edge that we need to push, you know, like. Um, but it can, it can get a, you know, if you let it, it can, Mars square, anything can get frustrating. So try not to push too hard. Um, the, the divine feminine energy is in the softer receiving side. Um, we've got a square from Uranus to, to the Jupiter, Mercury, and Saturn in Aquarius, which is interesting being that Uranus rules Aquarius. And so, um... Uranus sextile Neptune. So we have this this window or portal open to really do some breakthroughs spiritually. Um, on one hand, with connection and communicating with um, partnerships, and then in the outer, um, in the outer as well. Um, um, because it's just a spiritual time where we're going within and we're doing this kind of thing. So in the outer realm, um, in the physical environment, I would say um, it would be a good day to like dive into being um, into, you know, the, the music, creating some music, creating some art. Um, and seeing what comes through, what comes out of you, you know, the artsy side. And Uranus is being different, being innovative. Um, and then it's also just spirituality. So doing, you know, a talk or whatever your um, forte is. Um, new ways of communicating and expressing ourselves. Um, Libra energy is also, you know, it's aesthetics. It's like, you know, fashion and that kind of thing. So Uranus is like the trendsetter and in this time in our lives. So we can really like open up opportunities today to um, creating new trends and styles for music and fashion and things like that. Um, let's see. We've got the Mars, uh, Mars and Taurus trining Pluto and Capricorn. So 
So that's, that's really beautiful because Mars and Taurus is like, okay, the divine masculine is wanting to enjoy life. Pluto is reestablishing structure. And um, so that's positive communication of, all right, we're taking action. We all have that divine masculine and feminine within us to transform the structures of our lives. And it's really cool because no matter... You know, I'm really grateful for High Vibe TV and David Palmer's astrology and because it really helps like calm, be like, okay, that's what you're seeing because it resonates so great with him. Phenomenal ability to, to read it. I love Christopher Wojtecki as well and there's a million other good ones, I'm sure, but you know, like, how much time do you have? <laughs> like, you know, so those are my two um, go-tos, but... Um, Oh, I forgot what I was going to say about what David said this morning. Hmm. I hope you guys are on High Vibe TV, though. It's really um, a beautiful network. Um, I know I tend to talk about it all the time. It's just that I want, and that's, that's like where we can find some support, too. You know, like, even though it's, we want with Mars and Taurus especially, we want that physical connection at this time in our lives Aquarius and Gemini and North Nodes like it is going to be online and um, I'm going to read this quote to you guys since I have my phone up <laughs> failure is instructive the person who really thinks learns just as much from his failures as he does from his successes and so that's something we can look at too with the Gemini North Node and then the South Node of Sag Gemini is like figuring out logically, locally, communicating about it. If you're ever around a Gemini, they're very like talkative with their hands and and they're just, they want the facts, they want to research and, and that kind of thing. You know, it's very fast moving and um, so we want to, um, you know, dive into um, our plan, you know, structurizing our plan, which the moon and Virgo might have brought for us. And, and with this Capricorn energy, you know, just rethinking and um, logically figuring out, okay, well, I'm going to invite this in. What are the steps I need to take to do that? You know, being logical about the steps you need to take because we're all leveling up and sharing energy and learning to do this and that. And it can become overwhelming if you let it, and at the same time, slowing down and observing the beauty and abundance of synchronicities of what you asked for coming into reality, you know, like, um, and of just simple things, like, you know, sometimes I'll see children, like yesterday I went on a walk and I was like frantic, like, okay, I just want to see that I'm supported, I just want to see that I'm supported, <laughs> and going on my little, like, weirdness, and, um, Sometimes God will just send you the littlest things, like sometimes the way children look at me. I don't know if you guys have experienced this. It's like, whoa, I love what they saw in me because you could see it in their eyes and it happened like two in a row. And, you know, it's two God giving us just what we needed in that moment, you know, and I love, of course, seeing children without masks. And, um, but, the, but it's almost like they're little angels recognizing the angel in you. It's just so like, beautiful. And so those little things, um, I know for me, I'm wanting to savor those little moments more and bring them down. And of course, the bigger things that are available to us because we're vibrating up so fast, because we're trying to understand so much that. We want to remain in our hearts of gratefulness of the simple things that make us human, that we enjoy in life, you know? Um, yeah. So Mars and Taurus, it's our drive of wanting to enjoy the, ple the pleasure and the physical realm um, with the structures that are being transformed and created. Um, I hope, man, if you guys are on High Vibe, hit um, David Palmer's like Astrology for the Intuitive. I like to watch the Intuitive and the Daily. They're really cool because he sees it from this like galactic center like space. Um, and um, it's just so phenomenal the times we're living in. Um, so let's pull some tarot cards. 
Um, if I were to wrap up this day, it's it's really beautiful energy that is so lovely for communicating with partnerships, for leveling up spiritually, for tapping into our more creative side, and um, and going towards um, what gives us what makes us feel good for what we're building. Okay. All right. Divine Spirit, I thank you for this day. Thank you for this. Get this out. Oh, I... Ooh, let me put some cedar on my hair. <laughs> uh, thank you for this Monday. Thank you for this time in our lives. And God, I just ask that you give us some advice, insight, and guidance for this Monday, March 1st. And um, guys, we are still in Pisces season, so we want to remember that it rules the subconscious mind. And I think at the end of the day, being gentle and compassionate on ourselves and our process, and getting through subconscious patterns as a lot of it um, really helps and Pisces rules spirituality just like Neptune and it also rules like I said the subconscious and um, so let's see I would like to see which I want the collective to know right now through the tarot. What can you tell us about these times? There we go. I love when they fly out. <laughs> oh, the moon. We've got the moon card. So the moon card the moon is so many things, right? In tarot, it's representing that things will be illuminated. So what? So more illumination with this Libra moon. So be open. What's reflecting? Look at your emotions. Take time to sit with those emotions and your mind. If you feel like, you know, the moon uh, can rule lunacy and all of that, and we've got to un understand that we're not alone, that we can write about these things, talk about these things. You've got a million contacts available, and those people are probably going through the same thing or something else, you know? So, things will be illuminated today with this moon in Libra. And, um... You know, the moon is an interesting card. It really is. Because um, the moon is so many things. It can be a bit too much in the, in the emotional space. I need to come back to the sun and the soul. Um, but so for this being the card for today, it's saying to go with that like moon and Libra. Go with the relationships that have been illuminated. What partnerships, right? What partnerships... Are we in at this divine moment? And are we looking at it as a reflection? And let's get it, get the emotions out. It's okay to get the emotions out and to realize that, you know, emotions are beautiful and that they can, they can create beautiful pieces of work, you know? So letting the old emotions go and, and, Really integrating the blessings and the connections and emotionally, emotionally filling into those. Let's see, we'll do a, another card from the Goddess Tarot. It's kind of going a little long for the, for the daily. What else can you tell us today about um, this time in our lives, the ascension process for the collective? 
relationships, projects, any other um, advice, insight, and guidance that you'd like us to know. Thank you for it, Spirit. Fortune card. Awesome. And that is the Wheel of Fortune, which is the cycles. And it's a positive, positive one. It's very Jupiter. So it's like we've got that Jupiter card and that Libra moon card. And so knowing that these are faded times and that seasons do change and that the will has turned in our fortune. These are fortunate, beautiful times that we're being called to be a part of, to enjoy. So I really think like allowing and getting used to the emotional abundance that can be felt when understanding how fortunate and how blessed we are to be a part of such phenomenal times. You know, the moon um, ruling the mind as well, and especially with it in Libra. You know, it's okay. Be compassionate when your mind may go back, but just bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it to the present moment. Sink into the heart. Divine Spirit, thank you for these messages. And what makes you feel fortunate? What makes you feel so fortunate in life? And connect to that. Sit with that. Think of that. Speak on that. Really bring in that positive energy into your being more and more and more and more and more. And not in the way of the South Node where we want to think, you know, be, you know, dreamy or, you know, like create this grandiose thing as Jupiter can do, but to really understand how blessed we truly are to be a part of this phenomenal spiritual collective upgrade, you know? And so we got the soulmates card. <laughs> very, very, very beautiful. So we've got the moon, fortune, and the soulmates card. It's just so perfect with the astrology today. And um, accept that too. I feel like, you know, as someone with Mars and Leo, someone who's here to protect and stand up for truth and love and romance and, and um, purity and innocence of our souls, like, are you pushing away romance? Are you pushing away? Have, have you, are you stuck in that? It's not cool. It's cool to like see like multiple people and you're good you just got like people on your like dating site you know <laughs> I mean to each his own do what you do but let's be open to love right and always and always I tend to go really like one way <laughs> thank god though <laughs> soulmates a lover comes into your life to reflect your love your higher self the higher purpose of relationships is to mirror the love that you are Mm. that's what's beautiful no matter what circumstances or emotions has covered our sovereign truth that we are shedding right Pluto is a shedding and getting to the gold um, these relationships are mirroring each other's souls you know so we have to be willing to open up to that love that we are the higher purpose of relationships is to mirror the love that you are and melt away any walls or resistance to love. Love is a state of being of balance. It reminds you of your completeness. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> the wonderment of a whole you. Breathe in. Yes, let's not forget to breathe. The life force needs it. The blood needs it. The heart needs it. The brain needs it. Breathe in love 
and breathe love out. Make a conscious effort to be a lover of life and you will feel like you are making love in every moment of your life. Being in love is your natural state of being, and in this space, you will meet the souls of others who have awakened their heart centers. Mm, God, that beautiful heart center feels so good. <laughs> so we're going to do a Keepers of the Light deck. My cousin gave me this deck. She just had a baby on... Um, what was it when we got the snow here in Houston? And, you know, I didn't get a, a chance to do my own little research um, of the snow because I don't know if you guys saw the video um, that, you know, on, on Telegram, the Leo King has, like, a feed, and they were talking about um, the uh, snow in New York um, over this past week or last week that we had, it was last week or the week before, um, being fake, like someone showed where they were trying to burn it and it wouldn't melt, it turned black. So here though, in Houston, I wasn't able to do it after I saw it, I was like, dang, that would've been fun to do. But a couple people said that it was real and that it did melt, which is beautiful. That my cousin who gifted me this deck had a baby a few weeks early, the baby was healthy and good weight, and um, it was phenomenal to see how it all was like boom, 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 boom. The synchronicities of her having a baby, and I got to stay at her place and do some healing work, which was right next to a tarot shop that I was going to do readings at. And anyway, her baby, Zane, was born with so much Aquarian, so much Aquarian energy. Blessings on Jamie and Eddie and Zane. All right, Spirit, what can you tell us for this to continue this reading for Monday, March 1st? So we're finishing Pisces, very spiritual time. Um, if you know your ascendant, you'll be able to see like what's going on for you on a basic like level. wanted to be that you your soul signed up to be like it's there's no more like I want to do this just step through the door right so we've got share your voice definitely with the nodes and Gemini it's communicating come out of the cave <laughs> oh my god we gotta come back out of that meditation process we gotta bring it in the physical but take your time to do that work because that's a huge work Jeez. I was so against that inner work. No, it's inner slides and glides, which is true. Um, but it is work too. It's, it takes the patience, right? Come out of the cave. Perse persecution. Persecution. Expression. Persecution. Interesting. Come out of the cave. Persecution. Expression. I think I have a book to this one that I might share. Cave persecution expression. Yeah, these um, fear, anything with fear, anything with guilt, anything other than love, creative light is um, not truth. And um, it's important to remind yourself of that. These are interesting. I wish they were numbered. Let's see. So this one is share your voice. Share your voice, 76. So I would love to hear if you guys want to comment on any, like, what you're experiencing right now. You know, are you seeing number patterns? Like, what point of your path are you on? How are your angels speaking to you, you know? Are you um, opening up to new beliefs spiritually? Has your faith changed? 
um, how are you handling that, you know, it's, um, it's important to share your voice. <laughs> Come out of the cave, persecution expression. You're being called to share your voice, perhaps by speaking up in a relationship or through writing, speaking, singing, or some other form of creative expression. Yes. We each hold a truth deep within us that longs to be expressed. Sculpted for lifetimes, the voice of your soul is like no other. It carries with it wisdom that can only be gained through soul history and growth. So cool. By remembering, tapping into, and expressing this unique tone, we are not only, pardon me, we not only heal ourselves, we also heal the planet at large. When you share your voice, you unlock something in the universe and, and call a missing piece of you home. Your individual voice is the most powerful sound current on the planet. If you have kept your soul's voice silent or held back, chanting or singing could be truly life-changing for you. Aww. As we shed the layers of our personality and start letting our unique soul speak through us, we discover that we actually have a very clear message that longs to be shared. The more we speak it, the clearer it gets. There has never been a better time in history than right now to rise up, speak your truth, and share your soul's voice. If you feel fearful, know that you are not alone and that the world needs your unique tone in order to harmonize. Mm, and that's what it is. As we reach, as we rise up and share our song, we make it easier for the next person to do the same. Truly, like last night I did a live where I was, you know, I, <laughs> I had no direction. I was, you know, um, I'm going to hopefully express my story in better ways, you know, but someone that I've loved and connected to so deeply inspired me by being able to always state their truth. And, you know, as someone who never really cared and was starting to care about certain things just to become more of a, you know, human, <laughs> but still be myself, I, I questioned things like, why would I not speak my truth when that's what I value so much? And I know that that opens the door for others to do the same. And I know we've had enough of the fakery. And so let's not judge. Let's like accept each other for who we are and our truth or not. Work your light action, action, express yourself, share your voice, speak to those who can hear you. Yeah. And, and that's it. You know, whoever resonates and whoever will hear your message, they'll hear it. And if they don't agree, then they're not supposed to at this time. Divine Spirit, thank you so much for all the things. If you could give us an animal spirit card. Bless us with an animal spirit card. Oh, the animals. Thank you, God. We got the black bear, guardian. Gentle and wise protector, give me your confidence and power. Help me protect the ones I love. Awaken my intuition and guide me. It's beautiful. Beautiful. So beautiful. Hope you guys have a blessed Monday. And uh, please share this video. Comment below if you like. And um, thanks for being here.